We now just come to the last part of, uh, of this morning, which is to talk a little bit about the Employer of Choice program. Um, and being an employer of choice is all about caring for your employees, and that then extends into your colleagues and your clients. Um, it's about supporting staff to achieve work-life balance, and this is the context um, that we use within the Employer of Choice Network to talk about the various things that employers do to support their people. It all really now for us is coming under the heading of work-life balance, so it, it includes um, concerns around mental and physical health um, and other aspects of what goes on in organisations for people. Um, so what we're finding is that um, employers supporting their staff to achieve work-life balance means that those people are more productive and engaged at work. And then they've got the energy and a positive frame of mind to live a full life when they're not at work. And so that's how employers actually touch the whole community. So what we've been doing over the last six to 12 months is working with um, employers of choice to build up some case studies um, on just enabling us to understand what work-life balance is. Um, and so with the support of the Australian Institute of Management um, and WorkSafe TAS, and Cameron's been involved, um, we've produced a series of case studies. And what I'd like to do today is I'm, I'm going to introduce you to Simon Hyvatnan and Andrea Page from Glenview Community Services. They're sitting here in a moment. Uh, I'll ask them to come up and have a bit of a chat. but. Uh, before we do that, we'll have a look at uh, the case study uh, of Glenview Community Services in, in the work-life balance context. I've been here for nearly 12 months now and um, been enjoying my particular role in engaging with staff around where they see things are at um, in relation to the way that we would like to deliver our model of care for residents, which we're calling Residence Choice. Uh, it's about providing residents with a full and meaningful life through all its stages and how we can achieve that in a very practical everyday sense, not only for the residents, but also in my role encouraging how we can achieve those same things for workers in the way that they go about what they do, understanding that we are people first before we are support workers. With my father, I found that he had, um, had to have an operation. He's a diabetic, so that when he had his big toe amputated, he needed to come and live with my husband and I for four or five months. Everything he needed, I needed to provide. When I went and see my manager about this, that I needed more time or that I might have to retire. But I found my manager was understanding. They allowed me to change my hours to suit what I could do or what I needed to do for my dad, but also to maintain my job. So I was very lucky that they listened, that they cared, and that they provided me with the help that I needed. After a few months of being in my role, I um, was able to meet the staff and meet the residents, get the lay of the land, um, and an understanding of where we were, what we were trying to achieve, uh, what we were looking at, what the vision was uh, for the future. That didn't need to be a complex thing, it could be something fairly simple. The way we went about it was engaging with staff in conversation, understanding who they were, in how they understood their role, um, and that meaning of what it meant to them to be a support worker, a lifestyle worker, a carer, a nurse. When we see a resident that may need a bit of time spent with them, or if they ask, you know, um, what's happening, um, could we sit down and have a cup of tea with them? We can sit down and not feel that we're pressured with tasks that we may need to do. Uh, we don't look at them as tasks. This is part of our daily routine that we're there for the resident. If their needs are for us to provide them with emotional 
assistance or with love, I think you would call it, that's what we provide. What we talk with, with quality here is around identity, so knowing who the person is, getting staff to understand who the resident is, and having the skills to do that and understanding what they've been good at and having the time to be able to do that. Within the last six months, we've made a real focus to understand our workforce. Um, so we're developing um, a workforce plan to capture an understanding of who our staff are, what skills they have, what development areas there might be, and how we can enhance their their effectiveness to do their role. Uh, when I started working, I thought I might not be enough because I'm not Australian. But I started working at the Granville. I saw so many peop people from overseas working with me. And I thought, oh, this is okay. Because I, um, I wasn't, I didn't have a confidence in my English. We were, they started giving us a um, tablet. Just use a translation or, you know. So I said, oh, I can do it, you know. So it gives me a confidence working in uh, Australia and working in this industry. And, and yeah, I was very happy that uh, we can communicate each other with the English and then at the staff room. We all came from different countries, but speaking in English and then having a conversation. And yeah, that's a really bit, uh, beneficial, you know, for me. I think what Glenview has tried to do is involve the whole community. We go on walks for charities, we go on mud runs, which I thoroughly enjoyed. I actually got filthy with mud and water and was dunked, you know, when I went down this great big slide at the end of it, lost my sunglasses. <laughs> but I absolutely loved it. I come up spluttering, but I absolutely loved it and I felt that I was part of a team. On the way around we helped each other and I think that's what it was mainly about. Here at Glenview, one of our phrases that we, that we talk about a lot is um, journeying together. And we're trying to in incorporate that into the way we do support for residents or our clients. But we're seeing that from another perspective now, how we can journey together with our staff to achieve that life balance. So um, I'd like to welcome to the stage the star of the show, Simon, please, and, and Andrea, if you'd just like to come and say a couple of words. Um, well done. That was great. Uh, let me see whether I need to do that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you for the opportunity to mention a couple of things this morning. Um, we're an aged care facility, both uh, residential and offering community support to um, people out in their, in their homes. Um, we're a 24 hours a day, seven days a week organisation, so it can be tricky. Um, shift work, night shift was mentioned in some of the slides earlier, so we can understand um, we have quite an empathy around um, where we are in terms of understanding where people uh, can be impacted by the, the nature of the work or the nature of their shifts. Because um, we're working in aged care, you know, we're, we're exposed to people that are frail, that are death and dying and things like that. So it's a, quite an emotional space to work in um, and a highly rewarding uh, space at the same time. Um, I think uh, one of the major things uh, that we've learnt along the way, it's it doesn't need to be fancy, it doesn't need to be complex, it doesn't need to be um, significant um, in terms of its elaborateness. It can be just simple, honest, open conversations with staff, um, small uh, steps along the way, knowing that it's, like I mentioned there, we're journeying together, so we're, we're, we're working together with the staff to understand where they're at and um, being there to support them along the way with whatever hiccups come along. Um, like I mentioned, you know, we're, we're people first before we're workers. Um, and just taking that into context and realising that um, poor performance might not be just to uh, impact uh, and identify around their skills. It could be other things happening outside in their personal life that's impacting them at work. Um, I suppose the other key message, if I can 
share my ideas with you is keep your eyes open. Um, uh, look, look at the lay of the land. Um, take that moment to step back and I know we can get so busy and we can get so involved in the things that we need to do and the deadlines and the, the reports and the audits and all this kind of thing. Um, but yeah, step back and have a good, good look at your people, look them in the eye and see how they're really travelling because some of them are a little bit scared to actually say that stuff's going on. Um, being, being there, being present with them um, is really important. Uh, it's the same message that we provide to staff is about being present for the for the client or for the resident to understand how they're travelling. We're saying the same thing. Hey, we're willing to listen. We want to we want to talk to you about what's going on for you and and understand where we can support you. So, I thought yeah, I'd share that today. Thank you. I'm just interested to know what prompted you down this track because usually there's something that sort of starts a person thinking we should do differently or I'm going to take a different approach. So what was it that started you down this track? Um, essentially we were, we do, we are expecting a lot more of our staff around our model of care. So we understood that it's a give and take scenario. Like we, we need to be offering more support in that same environment to be able to, uh, to respond to that appropriately. Yeah, so that was the main trigger. Um, we do have working groups around workforce planning and um, health and wellbeing and stuff like that. So um, we just ramped that up um, and just made that a little bit more visible, a little bit more accessible um, and, a, and keep the conversation going. Even if it's just one or two minutes in a meeting, it's, a, it's keeping the conversation alive. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Thank you. I'm a professor from the US, but I just think you're great, man. That's right. <laughs> we're, tr we're trying, and, and I think that's the main main thing. People, we're, we're all humans. Uh, you know, we, we understand when someone's trying to make a difference for another person, and um, that's the attitude that we're, we're adopting, and I know I'm taking more conversation, but... No, I got um, Simon. <laughs> That's, I think that's, that makes a difference. People, when they have a genuine sense that you're, you're, you're trying genuinely to support them, um, they're more open to say, well, actually, I'll have an earlier conversation rather than when, thing, when things are here, rather than when things get really bad and you're like, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. you know, we haven't seen them for the last week, what's going on? We can pick things up quicker. Uh, yeah. And I, th I think what, what we see in this industry quite often is um, is the the other way around? It's um, it's all about client care, and 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 that's so quite often as a support worker, they're so focused and so committed on their job um, that looking after their self comes a fair way down the list. So it's fantastic that you've taken that priority to um, you know to have that focus on uh, on people first, and and uh, obviously then they become you know better support workers from that focus. So congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to, that slide that we've got up there, um, through the um, Work-Life Balance Project and with the support of Employers of Choice and, and AIM, this is the kind of um, graphic definition that we've, that we've developed on Work-Life Balance. So I guess that comes back really, we've turned a full circle and we're now back to work, what, what Tony was really talking about. Um, is how how to work what 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 can workplaces do what is the role of workplaces in the mental health of their people and and um, having something like this starts to sort of uh, make those connections you know really work and health and family friends and community they're all connected and and employers have got a really critical role in making sure that people have that balance and and so that's what we're really now trying to promote amongst the employer choice network but but beyond um, so uh, I'd, I just want to now just um, draw your attention to the fact that the employer of choice awards are now open um, and through those awards the Tasmanian government recognizes organizations that demonstrate um, contemporary workplace practices and outstanding support for their staff. And that includes opportunities for them to develop work-life balance and also care for their mental health. And we've had lots of examples of employers of choice that, that build that, uh, that kind of workplace that, that Simon 
and Andrea have been, have been sort of doing at Glenview. There are 70 employers of choice um, and we want to see many more. So if you're um, in a workplace that's doing a great job and we know that there's plenty out there that, that don't put their hand up to be recognised, um, please encourage your workplace to maybe have a look at the awards and, and put in an entry. Um, there's a card on your table that you can take away with, with details. Um, and we'll be announcing those awards um, sort of in the middle of next year. Uh, the other thing that I'd like to mention is that as part of the program, we've got a range of business cluster workshops. Um, and we've, got, we've actually got one specifically on mental health in the workplace. We've got Doug Vortier from OzHelp over here who delivers uh, one of the cluster programs. They're workshops that run uh, three half-day workshops over four months. We've managed to negotiate very good um, rates for organisations to participate in those series of, of workshops. So um, you don't have to do them all. You can pick one that, that matches the need of your workplace um, and give it a go. We, we think that we've got some really good um, relevant topics there, but in particular for, for today, for people here, that one um, that Doug delivers for OzHelp. There's also, you know, creating a life balance culture by Nick Stephen, which is then related back into the work-life balance work. So um, those are all on the Business Tasmania website, um, business.tas.gov.au. So if you want to have a look there, go to the employer of choice page and you'll get a link to full details and flyers on each of those clusters. Uh, there's an evaluation form on your table. We'd love to um, get you to spend a minute or two um, just letting us know what you've felt about um, the event this morning. Um, that'd be great because we always strive to be better next time. Um, so I guess that's a wrap. Is that right? Yeah, OK. Um, thank you very much to Angela um, and Christy and the team at UTAS School of Business and Economics. Um, thanks very much to Cameron and the team from WorkSafe TAS. Um, thank you all and look forward to seeing you at the next one. And, and have a great conference if you're around for the next couple of days. Thank you. Thank you.